can see from my presentation, uh, this work that I'm going to, to introduce to, do, to you today uh, was um, part of a big research called Inclusive uh, Memory and so the use uh, of memory uh, to facilitate uh, um, to the use of memory and heritage to facilitate inclusion uh, and the development of soft skills, uh, citizenship skills in particular. And uh, this work uh, started in our university using our uh, collection. Uh, if you go on with the slides, I don't know if you can. Okay, here you have uh, um, a slide that is uh, introducing our Center for Museum Studies. You can see also the pictures of the other uh, colleagues, researchers involved in our Center for Museum Studies. It's a center that was created in 1994 already then uh, to fill in a gap uh, in Italy related to research in the field of uh, museum studies in particular and to um, systematize, to archive all the teaching and learning materials that were already created uh, by the different uh, uh, museums all over the country but with, that were not actually uh, properly archived. So this archive has been developed and uh, it has been digitalized and is an asset of our Center for Museum Studies. Um, here you can see that we started this research working on uh, different kind of uh, uh, ideas. Uh, in literature, it is uh, found that there's a strong connection between heritage and the development of uh, uh, citizenship uh, uh, skills and soft skills. Uh, and also the connection between heritage, formal and informal uh, educational settings it proved to be um, effective in uh, such uh, development. Uh, the other idea that we wanted to investigate was uh, uh, the possibility to uh, develop digital skills through the development of uh, uh, specific uh, project devoted to heritage uh, fruition. If we go on, I can show you uh, the uh, author of the collection that uh, uh, on which we worked. Uh, the collection is um, has been donated to the university, to our department in particular, uh, just recently. The author is Tito Rossini, as you can see, he is a, a fairly young artist, uh, but very important all over Italy and he is uh, uh, an artist that uh, is from uh, the area um, of Rome, uh, Lazio region. Uh, so he's a, he's a local painter and his collection has particular uh, features. Uh, so the collection that is uh, um, stored in our department actually uh, was not supported uh, by any uh, tool to um, to uh, enjoy uh, such a collection. Uh, actually, at the moment of the project, all the paintings that were distributed all over uh, the building uh, were not supported by even by labels, even by um, you know uh, na the name of the author and the titles uh, uh, of uh, uh, the works. So uh, the project was really uh, really uh, needed. Of course, there was no um, deep learning uh, tool to support uh, such a, a collection. So we involved the students in the development and the design of the project. And if we go on, uh, I'll show to you, of course, briefly, if you are then interested on the days, we can give them to you. And so we uh, produced different kinds of uh, uh, contents of uh, digital uh, materials. Um, we produced uh, um, recordings, of course, related to the author, to his, uh, his uh, themes and topics. Uh, we also worked on some soundtracks connected, inspired by uh, the image uh, of uh, the painting. Uh, we also uh, involved the students in writing 
um, short stories related to uh, the to each painting that we uh, worked on um, and uh, as you can see here in this methodology timeline different kind of activities were carried out from uh, the teaching and learning uh, connected to digital storytelling and to object-based learning that were the methodologies at the basis of such a, a project uh, design until the delivery of uh, the contents um, digital the digital tools we produced and a pilot activity that I'm going to present to you in brief uh, details. Uh, what I told you, so all the different uh, tools uh, were uh, accessible through QR codes. Uh, and so the people that participated in particular in the uh, first uh, pilot uh, had the possibility to access to those contents through their uh, QR code. Uh, if we go on, uh, you can see here the QR codes and the options that uh, each visitor had the possibility to choose. They could choose uh, um, either to listen just to the um, you know, information related to the author or they could listen uh, to the soundtrack or uh, you know, enjoy the, the digital storytelling that was connected to each painting. It was, it was up to the, to the um, visitor. Uh, they could, of course, have the whole of it, uh, the, whole, the complete offer. Here's, here you have some screenshots of what appears on the mobile phones of, of uh, the people accessing the exhibition. Of course, I'm sorry, it is in Italian, but you know, um, anyway, you can figure out how uh, it showed on, on the device. If we go on, we can see uh, how the evaluation tool was structured because, of course, besides offering all these kind of contents, we also wanted to know if the visitors uh, were satisfied with what we offered, but also what they thought about the exhibition before uh, using uh, such contents. Because as I was telling you, the collection is stored in a university building, so different kind of people come to the building for different reasons. Um, there, there are students, there are staff, there are administrative staff, uh, there's a library, uh, there are, you know, um, uh, other kind of uh, people that can access the building for many, many different reasons. So the idea of um, getting something from a, an exhibition in, in, um, in the building uh, was some way unexpected, I, I would say so. Uh, so these are some pictures from uh, the, the pilot phase, the day of, uh, of uh, the visiting, the first uh, visit to the exhibition. I, I mean a structured visit because we, we wanted to get some data about what we did. And it was, you know, it was unexpected also the fact that, as you can see from this picture, uh, the workers came on that exact day uh, to put the labels under the uh, the paintings, and until then, you know, no label was was shown. So uh, it was a strange uh, combination. Anyway, if we go on, mm, uh, we can see some data. Uh, yes, uh, so we had uh, uh, fifty one people participating in. Uh, in this first uh, uh, pilot, um, they um, enjoyed they enjoyed the, the the visit. They didn't expect actually. Um, they didn't know so much about about the especially about the painters. If we go on, there's another. Um, Another uh, slide that highlight this uh, this fact. So uh, they um, they 
actually uh, said that the exhibition was not exploited as it, as it, as it should be. Uh, and they, most of them didn't know about the painter. They really appreciated and what we offered really uh, raised some uh, curiosity in, uh, in um, the attendance. And if we go on, we see something else. They appreciated also the idea that they could uh, uh, they could find their own way through the exhibition, thanks to uh, the QR code and the contents that were stored uh, in the QR code. If we go on, we can see something more. And what we learned uh, from this experience that of course uh, is ongoing and we have been collecting more data uh, that are under uh, evaluation at the moment um, is that there's a, really the possibility to uh, involve uh, different users um, in uh, heritage settings, especially in settings uh, where uh, the university is involved. So um, what in Italy is so much supported called, and it's called the third mission of the university can really be carried out um, involving different kinds of publics, different kinds of users, um, and uh, making them um, uh, work uh, directly on the stories that can be shown uh, and can be um, created through uh, the paintings uh, and uh, you know the different museum objects that can be found in uh, a university uh, setting. There's another point that I would like to, to underline is that any user, any person uh, coming in touch uh, with uh, a, a museum object uh, brings along uh, a different background. And so that specific object has a different meaning for each person uh, that comes in touch with that object and can create new meanings, can create new memories that can be shared and can facilitate inclusion. Uh, the other important result from this uh, uh, activity that we have been carrying out so far and that, that is ongoing, as I was saying, is that through um, the use of uh, their own uh, mobile devices, it is possible to develop different kinds of, uh, um, of skills. Uh, as I was saying, uh, citizenship skills uh, related to the idea of uh, feeling uh, involved, of feeling part of uh, the society where they are based, but also they can understand di a different way of using their own technological devices, where uh, different kind of contents, personalized, individualized contents, because everyone could choose, can choose a, a different kind of uh, um, offer, uh, can be performed uh, entering, um, in this case, a university collection, in other case, you, uh, you know, whatever museum setting. I think, yes, in fact, this is the, the last la slide. Thank you so much for your attention.